Episode 51. Episode 51. It's been the five. Boys. It's been five weeks since we last recorded, since we last dropped an episode. It's good to be back. Shit. It is good to be back. It is good to be back. And um, on the way here, I thought, seeing that guy cross the road with a ponytail, and I just thought, funny things, unironically. You know, like dudes who <laughs> walk around with the tiniest fucking ponytail going like just walking around with it unironically like they think it's cool it's called, I mean? it's called the top knot and there was a video that came out back in 2014 and uh it was a piss take video it turned out to be a anyway so it was called stop the knot dude's cop chopping going yeah, it was around. called stop the knot right uh, I, i'm pretty sure these guys were south african and they're going around cutting people's top knots off and the amount of the video went viral so much fucking hate, didn't they? and people were fucking raging because they were saying, right, ponytail's fine, and I can't remember what the other, the opposite of the ponytail was, but they said that one in the middle of the top knot, it, it has to go. Why is the opposite of a ponytail? It was like it was, it's like a bun, like a bun's fine, but not a top knot, it, or like a samurai bun, something yeah, like that, something yeah. like that, yeah. And people were fucking kicking off at these guys, but the joke is. Is that those people having their top knots cut off? All actors, they're all in on the joke. They just wanted a free haircut. They were just in on the joke. Yeah, it was funny, but the comment section was just so toxic. Was, they were like, "If you'd ever done that to me, I would have smashed your fucking face." And that's what they—that's what people in the comment section were saying. I'm back on Facebook, by the way. Anyway, sorry, I'm carrying on. No, I'm just saying, like, think of other things and ironic people do unironically, but it's fucking hilarious. Do you know what I mean? Socks like, and sandals. Socks and sandals. Yeah. White socks as well. There's, you'll yeah, see tourists right. you're going to see this now this is your first summer in this nice little seaside town this little coastal town you're going to see the influx of tourists that come mid-July so we're three weeks away from the summer holidays and you're going to see people from all walks of life congregating in this little coastal town of 55,000 people you're going to see socks and sandals you're going to see crocs you're going to see fat Mate, thin you know what, actually, old speak. young I've actually uh, like Crocs ain't too bad. I don't got I don't understand why they got so much hate back in the day, but they ain't, ain't, ain't actually that bad. They 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 look pretty. They're all right, you know what I mean. I I, I I'd wear them. Have you seen Idiocracy? Mm, yeah, not in a long time though. It's one with Justin Long in it. Yeah, yeah. In it in Id- Idiocracy, I'll give a real quick rundown. Of no, that. but I, sorry, but the people that wear socks and sandals, their feet must be fucked up. It's gotta be, isn't it? I just don't understand They're like it. bunions and shit. The like. whole point of sandal... I don't know. Don't get me into it. Don't even get me started on it. There's, there's more, man. There's more. There's there's like... People... Joe's... Girls like... Oh, fuck you anyway. They wear like fucking bunny ears. Publicly. You know? Like It's like a headband, but it's like... It's got ears on it. It's gay. It's gay as fuck. I've not seen it. I've not I've seen it on like a fancy dress or a hen or... A night out. Oh, I'm all in for people in empowering themselves, but like, you know what I mean? Walking around with fucking bunny ears on. Mm. Anyway, Idiocracy, mate. Is what Mike Judge was on the Joe Rogan podcast. He was a writer director of Idiocracy, and it's about your average Joe, played by um, oh, Luke Wilson. He's in the army, just sits in an office, and he's offered this uh, assignment where he'll be frozen, not he'll be put into a cryogenic sleep for a year. But there's some controversy during his year that he's uh, put into the sleep and he's forgotten about. And it's not until 500 years later that he wakes up and realizes the world has gone to shit. Everyone is dumb. Is this idiocracy? This is idiocracy, yeah. Justin Long's not in it. Yeah, he's in it. He's one of the doctors. Oh, he's in it. Yeah, he's not the main character. And But you'll notice anyone that watches this film or has seen this film, they'll know that most everyone in that world wears Crocs. And Mike Judge was explaining on the Joe Rogan podcast is that they were so under budget that they just found something cheap and it was this up and coming footwear which was Crocs at the time and he thought nothing of it he just said you know what we'll just get these Crocs because they're cheap you know it was all to do with the wardrobe department and, so, uh, uh, and it ended up being popular like a few years later oh, that yeah, reminds yeah. me right I got a, sorry I'm going to go on a little tangent now go for it man this is what this podcast is built on <laughs> so tangents yeah so I was looking at the most deadliest fish Mm-hmm. Not just fish, but crustaceans and octopus. I don't know the different subspecies. This any, but let's just say fish when we're talking to anything that lives in the ocean, right? What's an arachnid? That's a spider. A spider, yeah. yeah. So uh, one of them's a stonefish. A stonefish looks like a rock. 
oh, and, it, and you'll, fi- you'll find it around Indonesia so uh, you'll find it in North Australia and they have these like uh, big spikes in the in their back mm-hmm. and they, they go up with their feel threatened or well, like, like shelter from Pokemon bit bit like that right and you step on it and it will inject these toxins if you don't get help within an hour you're dead and people apparently well, it's been reported that the pain is so intense that people have begged you know the emergency services to cut their leg off yeah because that's how poisonous it is and they the last thing you know is fucking painful if you're asking for your leg to be cut off that's when you, that's, that's when you're going beyond pain and, isn't it? and it looks like a rock yeah. it's an ugly looking fucker the stonefish it's got eyes and shears it just looks yeah like it's got stone. eyes it looks like a big rock and it's it just, camouflaged into the stone yeah, yeah yeah and it just sits there and it just feasts on prey that comes by because the stingers aren't actually really designed it's not what's called uh it was the word i learned in the documentary not a stealth predator but something there's different terms for predators depending on what type of predator they are and it's, it's like st- a sloth in it they sleep but they're dangerous they just sort of they just chill out and do nothing but those uh those uh, spikes in it, which is called spikes. I'm not getting the technical term right. Um, they're there to defend, uh, to protect it. Not actually. Obviously, to... from other fish, they're not humans. Yeah, but if you step on it, put your hand on it, man, you, you fuck, are yeah. fucked. Fifty-five million on this tiny little island. It's quite a lot, of people. Yeah, the third most populated place being the United States. So, fucking hell, man. That's no wonder we're building houses on fucking in between houses. <laughs> <laughs> I know. These little silk boxes that just get thrown up. Fuck, man. It's terrible around here. Some of the places, man. Some of the dingy little tiny alleyways. I know. And they're all built on hills as well. Yep. Some of the architecture's mad. Like, how do you... This time, like, 10 years ago, they were doing what's called the Olympic Village in Portland for the sailors and all that when they were doing the Olympic sailing, sailing event. And um, so they made these... The Olympic Village. Little Olympic Village, right. And they just basically like easy accommodation for... Um, the sailors and that shit and uh but as soon as all that finished they're just like oh we'll just turn them to homes <laughs> are they are they the ones like is that nuketown is that the ones all that's, what, that's yeah, what i yeah. call it nuketown yeah because i don't even think they're meant to they're meant to, to be for like commercial but as soon as the olympics were over like well we got all these homes here we might as Mate, well if they didn't have numbers on them <laughs> imagine i know i just i get home drunk like the fuck do I live? <laughs> Where am we I? did it before. When Brett was down here like six oh, years man, ago. Yeah, we got we, fucking lost. We got blazed and we're just walking through this little nuke town. We're like, it was like, Where is this? What, what movie is it where they're just walking and it, like, they keep going past the same shit? Oh, I can't remember. Scooby Doo. Every episode of Scooby Doo. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's just technical. That's just a fucking technical thing. In the background, isn't it? No, there's a movie. They just keep walking past the same shit. So, now nah, it's the Matrix, the train station bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what I'm on about, yeah. But going back to box jellyfish real quickly, right? So there's another subspecies of jellyfish that is uh, literally the size half, size of your thumbnail, right? Because what the Aussies do, because you've got a lot of Aussies that like to go out swimming and stuff in the ocean. They don't care about sharks. They don't care about jellyfish. They they find a way around it. So Shark. They, <laughs> so they find that if they wear, they've got these sting protection suits that they can wear when they go out swimming. Mm-hmm. And uh, is that invented after Erwin or before? Erwin, oh no, Erwin got hit by a stingray. Oh yeah, nothing to do with jellyfish. What <laughs> about jellyfish? Sorry, I just, that's all right. Australia, fucking swimming. Just Steve Erwin came to my head. <laughs> when it comes to like pools as well, like they have like because the beaches will have like signs saying jellyfish, like fucking stay away from the water. Mm-hmm. So they'll have like these little designated areas where they'll have like a little little safety net that protects the people in the in the, in the pool the bathers from from the jellyfish that'll be coming in especially because it's like the season i can't remember the season i think it's like november to february or something like that's the jellyfish season and um i'm trying to think now but that can't protect them from these little tiny box jellyfish that are the size of your thumbnail fucking hell man and they're just as deadly i mean their tentacles are about a meter long and they'll fuck you up it's fucking that creeps me out about like small things yeah they're normally the most fucking poisonous dangerous motherfuckers in in the, yeah. the world because there'll be people there's been reports of people being going out for their swim in the ocean they get stung by one of these box jellyfish mm-hmm. and they try and swim back to safety but they die of shock because the agent the, the thing that they the poison that they're stinging you with goes through your whole nervous system and basically causes shutdown Jesus fucking Christ. each organ at a time That's so once you, once your diaphragm your heart you know stops working you fuck that's it you're in shock you're dead people will be trying to swim back what are you scared of the most S- say like 
you got kidnapped and someone put you in a room and and it, they knew what was your most scared thing you were scared it of. wouldn't take it wouldn't take much to break me really because <laughs> you know i mean there's there's all these there's these tactics i mean <laughs> not torture or anything it's just what you're most afraid of you know what i mean i think even just good cop bad cop would break me really yeah like they just come in and it's like hey how's it go you want a cigarette yeah and the, the other, other guy, guy like, just slap. what the fuck Daniel <laughs> just slam him out on the table <laughs> a dish, a dish, a dish. with the smiley good cop like so are you gonna talk yet don't yeah. mind him <laughs> just those two <laughs> I, I'm finding it hard to <laughs> my face is just like swollen to one side I'm like, <laughs> like don't mind him he's just had a bad day I, I'll give you a few examples right it might, might trigger you um, so being stuck like can't move your legs arms like you just you're stuck you know what I mean? There's no, there's no escape. There's no physical way of escaping. All you've got is your head to be like, help! <laughs> oh, that would frighten me massively. Uh, the yeah. thought of going caving. I watched a horror movie. A little. Oh, Danny Mullen did one. Literally, his newest video is about going caving, and his yeah. cameraman is just shitting himself. Oh, no and he's going. Up, Danny's going up the tiniest little, little thing, thing, and he's like, "Come on, Nico, you pussy!" Like <laughs> <laughs> the guy's having a panic attack. Like I can't do it. <laughs> I have nightmares about claustrophobic. Claustrophobia is a thing. Oh yeah, not not so claustrophobic. It's more the stuck thing, but like, cause I'm not really afraid of heights and that either. It's more silly things like fucking clowns, mate. If a clown walked in that door right now, it'd be getting attacked. Yeah, I'm it's, I'm scared of uh, moths, lepidotrophobia they call it. Moths, moths, well, moths are like, terrified. Like visit, like if someone comes flying in your room, you'd go and your covers. Like no, no, the, the no. moths get bigger as the as we go into summer into autumn, and um, so like when you get to like September October the, time, the ones that got huge. bodies like oh, fucking, fucking humongous. And go back yeah. to Australia, right? They got moss the size of like this big. Yeah, they have got massive spines. Oh, and in the fact well. they they flapping your face. It all goes back to when I was fourteen, right? Um, you know when you live in Corby, the, Corby's a weird place because of its high. Did out. someone spread their ass streaks over your face? <laughs> no. Okay. No, it's, it's moth layered. Okay. Um, <laughs> this is, this is, <laughs> just the wing the, you know the wings the, yeah I, just reminded I was 14 I'm just chilling in my room I got my window open because it was October but for some reason in Corby because it's geographically a bit strange um, in the middle of fucking nowhere that's why just on a high altitude and it can, it can get warm sometimes and humid even in autumn Yeah, man. and uh, I had rough. my window open and this fucking the biggest moth you've ever seen in your life just casually just flies through my window right and I'm just like uh, uh, right, and I, I try and it just flies in my face, and I'm like, oh, oh, oh. I felt violated. I'm like, oh my god, it's disgusting. <laughs> I know, right? So I get a bit of paper. It lands on my little robot bit piggy bank. It landed on my robot piggy bank. Yeah, I had this for years. All right, the batteries are long since died. So this little <laughs> robot piggy bank is just like with his arms like this, like something out of Metropolis. And it lands on it, and I get this bit of paper, and I just, all right, yeah, and it just fucking went everywhere. Like, cause it was such like a gooey yellow in it. Ugh. And, um, I was, uh, ever since then, I've just never been cool with big moths. Like little moths don't mind too much. I'm not, yeah. I'm not scared of flies and moths and that. I just, I don't want them in my room. Mm. Like, like if they'd just kindly get the fuck out of my room. It's great. If it, once they're in my room, I just have a panic attack. I'm like, no, this, yeah. this has to go or it has to be murdered. And I know some people don't like that, but. You know, it's invading my personal space. Yeah. Yeah. No, or are we invading their space by just being here? Yeah, I guess. Should so. we be here? I like that Bill Hicks joke when he says that the the light bulb really, really fucked the moth. <laughs> because what, what did moths do before before electricity? Do they just fly? There's a moth right now flying, flying to, to the, the sun. sun. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's gonna be totally worth it, guys. It's gonna be. <laughs> I just how long it'd fucking take them. Yeah. I gotta tell you. I think that's the wind banging something. You know. I'm gonna sort it out. All right. I've got a story to tell you straight We'll afterwards. have an intermission. <laughs> and we're back. My, I'm part of this little WhatsApp group chat with my sister and Rich and the kids, my mum. Mm-hmm. And uh, Kerry uploads, sends this video of, of her chastising Kane, who's ne- he's nearly 13 now, right? Mm-hmm. And he, she'd found 15 quid on him. So where'd you get it from? It turns out he'd been selling uh, chewing gum, so he says, at one pound a pack. To the kids and he'd been turning a profit as a result and uh it just got me thinking to some story about that. there's no fucking way he's selling chewing gum he's selling cigarettes isn't he he's like proper he's either doing that or he's selling weed bro nah he can't be selling weed not for you reckon yeah you can do 20 bits for 15 
that's that's a way to build business up my response was i put i put a message back saying uh kane are you still uh selling three and a half packs of chewing gum for 30 quid <laughs> <laughs> what did he say nothing my sister just put a laughing face <laughs> but he's definitely not selling chewing gum i know he's not smart kid though isn't he like 12 years old and he's thinking about that when i was 12 i was playing he's my 12 actually no if he's 12 maybe yeah no he's when i was 12 i was playing my um game boy game boy sp yeah, mate, when I was 12, yeah, I was jerking off playing Halo 2, man. Yeah. 12, that's about 12, isn't it? Yeah, Halo 2, yeah. I think this generation of children are very industrious. We've kind of got this new wave of entrepreneurs coming our way. It all ties back to the... It literally is now. This this whole generation is literally... If you, like, I was on TikTok, cause I, I upload sporadically just shitty little clips just to kind of advertise the podcast and upload memes and shit, you know? And whenever I'm on that For You bit, it's literally all it is is kids, like go to the 99p shop and the advertising shit to buy like they're just mm. all in it for the money innit? that's all clout is now is just getting a sponsor and making money I, like, d- I don't know who said it but um it might have been tim paul or one of those other conservative podcasters but they were saying that the not the gen z's but the generation after them i make a joke and refer to them as generation hashtag we're millennials aren't we? we're millennials yeah God damn it we're millennials and then you get gen z's which is like 2000 something 98 something i don't know Isn't we're in gen x now started gen x is before millennials it's a bit confusing right no but there's a new one now there's a new one. yeah i don't know what they call it. i call it generation hashtag all right or the tablet generation well we've got this laptop here for a good fucking reason oh well, there we go what is it like the generation chart yeah what yeah what comes after gen z put that put, put yeah what comes yeah. after gen z what or gen z i don't want to sound american Fuck it, Gen Z, mate. I say Z sometimes, you know. Generation Alpha. You know what? And what year are they saying that that is? Generation 2010 to 2024. Kane was born 2009, so he's just before. What's before? He's, he's Gen Z. All right, so he's a tail end Gen Z. All right, so Gen Z. Gen Z ended, Gen Z ended in 2009. 2009 2009, sorry. <laughs> I don't know why the fuck I just it said was, 2009. Uh, I remember the <laughs> first. <laughs> do, <laughs> do you remember Swine Flu? In 2009. Swine flu, fucking hell, yeah, I do. Oh, God. Oh, yeah. Oink, oink. That was fake as well. <laughs> 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 Didn't get me booster or my vaccine for that bastard either. <laughs> <laughs> fuck him all. <laughs> see, oh, mate, did you see that the other day about polio? Oh, fuck off. Oh, oh mate, there's, the polio is in the fucking sewage water, mate. And they're talking about people getting fucking vaccines for it. It's, oh, it's outrageous. It's fucking outrageous. Oh, mate, look that up as well, then. What are they saying about polio? Mate, I'll tell you. I'll tell you what they say about... They found polio. Yeah, so in London, samples were detected and um, of polio in London sewage water in February. And now they're just bringing it to the news now. Okay. And and, and what are they saying? 95% of five-year-olds haven't had the jab. Got you. So pretty much everyone's safe from polio except the, the few, like... New school parents who didn't get their child's jabbed. Genera- Children jabbed. Genera- Childs? What is wrong with you? Jake? The generation alpha. Yeah. Watch out, alphas. Which, man, like, if I ever had kids, I don't know, man. Like, there's so much fucking different news here and there. You'd, you'd just be fucking, like, con- like as a new parent, be confused what to do. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. It'd be well, fucking terrifying. Well, this this uh, observation that was made on on a podcast that I'd watched, they talk about the Gen Zs, uh, the new, conser- new wave of conservatism that we're going to see in terms of, uh, you know, capitalism and cause co- cons- being a conservative, yeah, the, the, the capitalism is involved, but the people forget it's not just left and right. Well, it is left and right, but it's not just like socialism versus capitalism. You've also got authoritarianism versus libertarianism, right? So these Gen Zs or Ken- Keynes generation are going to be a new wave of, of um, right-leaning libertarians where they believe in free trade, they believe in, you know, they're, they're industrious, they believe in entre- entrepreneurialism. Kind of. Is that a word? I see a pattern emerging though, right? I said it earlier to High Flyer and that, you remember High Flyer, the Canadian guy, um, they they have this group chat on Discord and it's like, it's called uh, The Truth Hurts and they just post like fucking shit like, that would hurt some people out there but i said to them earlier i was like do you remember like 10 years ago a lot of they were trying to bring an ethnic culture into the Mm. workplace and now and now 10 years later it's 
kind of still the same, but now it's more like transgender and non-binary people behind the two. Oh, I can't remember. It bugs me that I can't remember that. But it's like three letters and it stands, and it's what they, it's their sort of seal of approval when it comes to ticking certain boxes. So like I said, Netflix is owned by BlackRock. So that happened in 2016. Mm -hmm. And this is the reason why Netflix is, or was failing, is because they were having to, when 2016 came along, you saw a lot of the content was changing. It was a lot more aimed at Democrats. It was a lot more aimed at environmentalism and wokeism, you know, mm -hmm. because I want to say BSG rating, ah, something along those lines. Once if something promoted fairness, equality, Black Lives Matter, maybe, or, uh, you know, was not transphobic, it would hit, it would tick the box on that rating and it would go up. Because these companies are in mercy, are forever being held hostage by the less, um, the um, shareholders. All right. So same with Nike. Same with they just want money, and it's kind of the same thing, isn't it? Like they sell a dream to get money to then half-ass it. That's it. Because these investors, all they care about is getting their money back and making yeah. a profit. That's, yeah. And but you're starting to see that Netflix is rejecting. Uh, black the 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 shareholders of BlackRock in a way because Dave Chappelle was kind of the the guy going against the grain you know he'd make these jokes and the transgender community would kick off even if a lot of them hadn't even seen this the this, the whole special and he was talking about I, even I haven't finished watching the whole special but it was talking about um, a friend of his who was transgender and was being so badly bullied by the trans community that this woman, I believe her name was Daphne, transgender woman named Daphne, took her own life. Right. And you know what I mean? So, but people hadn't seen the special, they were giving him shit online and they're trying to cancel him. And Netflix basically just told them to go fuck themselves. They said to the employees as well, the, the, the sort of, uh, the LGBT uh, people working for them said, go someplace else. If you don't like it, then Netflix ain't for you. So they're starting to push back now and playing into the whole um, Gen Z conservatism that we're starting to see or the entrepreneurial wave of Gen Z's that we're going to be seeing because my nephew, who's the tail end of that generation, he's going to be 13 in September and already he's selling chewing gum. All right. Shud. <laughs> yeah, hubba bubba. <laughs> you know what I mean? What's the ones with this, the juice in it? Is that hubba bubba? Yeah, it's hubba chew bubba. Them, it's got, yeah, it's yeah. got like two chews and then it's gone. And mm. um, I mean like the ones with juice in it. But the Gen Z are the ones that are going to be the... In my eyes, I'm seeing them being the sort of rejection to this woke um, it's this, uh, culture that we find ourselves in. We're starting to see it being rejected now. You know, there's something I wanted to pass by you that I haven't really spoke to you at length about. You look at our generation, right? We are born in 1992 and we went into school. We're the 50-50 generation. That's what I said. In my head, yeah. that's what I... We came after the... Because uh, we still had the internet, but it wasn't... Well, it's not even the technology I'm talking about. It's the culture. We came after Maggie Thatcher. We came after... Ronald Reagan. When we were born, who was prime minister? It wasn't Maggie, was it? No, she'd stepped down because of that. Of the, John, she, dude. John Major. Yeah. John Major and Bill Clinton was who was a Democrat. I don't like so. Uh, we don't blah, 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 need blah. Google. <laughs> no, we don't need Google for this one. So what I'm trying to say is that the generation we're we're in a weird in between generation, right? Because we were the tail end of that um, Reaganomics era. All right. Mm -hmm. So Reagan gets into power, Thatcher gets into power, and they start pushing this whole ideology that kind of stems from uh, Anne Rand's objectivism, who talks about the individual. She, she uh, Anne Rand was a, she used Superman as an example, and she demonstrated this in some of her novels. I only read one of them, which was Fountainhead, but the Fountainhead consists uh, is a story about this architect named Howard Rourke, and he's kind of like this one individual that just rises to the top and kicks ass. And that's what Anne Rand meant by, you know, kind of stems from Nietzsche's um, Ubermensch and stuff like that. Like you, the individual, are in control of your own destiny. They were very disingenuous, Thatcher and Reagan, right? They were Aren't just they all, though? They're very disingenuous. They all. But the message is a good message that they were trying to push. It's just they were doing it for their ulterior motives. So then we come along during, and as we get to four or five years of age, New Labour comes along with Tony Blair. And you've also got Bill Clinton, who's in power up until 2000, right? So they start, uh, and you notice this at school, we all notice this. They start pushing this whole fairness thing, you know, 
don't be you know anti-bullying campaigns yeah. fairness accepting people regardless of, and don't get me wrong that's a good thing right and i was raised that way by my dad because i lived with him a lot between the ages of four and eight monday to friday i was with him and he taught me about fairness he taught me about racism he taught me about mm-hmm. you know this is what the world's like he introduced it to me from a very young age he would read martin luther king's biography to me as a bedtime story you know what i mean and to this day i still remember very early on in that book martin luther king jr he's just a young kid at a shoe shop with his dad and a white woman just slaps him in the face and i'm like daddy when did that woman slap that man in the face you know what i mean slap that boy in the face that's what you got to bear in mind so this is something i've been thinking about we came after that whole power to the individual um of the 80s right and then we start to fall into this classical this classic classical liberal ideology of fairness equality mm-hmm decency which works and you know it's a good message to teach but then by the time it gets to 2012 and you got obama and all that it goes way further and he he introduces his anti-bullying campaign and that's when you start to see the juggernaut that we have today mm-hmm. with this whole postmodernism takeover and it, the council culture Shia LaBeouf. <laughs> <laughs> i'm rambling a lot because it's something i've given a bit of thought to but i've never really articulated until this moment that we fall into that weird generation like it started off well because you remember every assembly when you would get some hippie that'll come up and they'll be like it's not you know sticks and stones may break my bones and they're trying to be like well actually words do hurt they do hurt yeah like uh, you know what infuriates me right about the public school system is that you could they'll get they'll get in so much money per per year and they were just fucking wasting it we get people that were literally in my head, I, I, I swear to God, they must have just fucking took anyone off the street and said, do an assembly for these kids, motivate them. Right, we had, 100%. We had one woman who was, uh, we, we were thir- 12, 13 at the time, and she's saying to 120 20 kids, eight years from now, there'll be no more landfill left. Right, that was in 2004. <laughs> I woke up, 2012, brushed my teeth. I was a bin man. Like, There's fucking plenty of landfill left. What was it? She said eight years. Eight years. There'll, be, what, there'll be no more landfill left. Oh, fucking hell. It's pretty shit. I know. I wish I had an email. 2012, you lying bitch. <laughs> it's 2022. There's still landfill. Yeah, there's still landfill. There's still fucking landfill everywhere. I know. You know we're, doing, we're doing a removal service. Exactly. And guess where it goes? <laughs> the landfill. On the landfill. <laughs> to the incinerator. <laughs> that, was, that was 10 years, 18 years later. And I'm not saying like I know the world's in a bad place. Don't get me wrong. I'm not. I'm not. She's triple vax, mate. That's what. No, fuck quadruple. She got a polio quadruple. vax. Quadruple. She's fucking. What's the what's the fifth one? Quadruple. I don't know. Quintuple. Quintuple. Quint. Sex tipple. No decker. He triple. <laughs> <laughs> what do they call it? Tetra. Oh, no, no, I'm lost. Yeah, but he looks like a. So this was back in 2014. There was a 15 year old kid. Tommy Rose. Shout out to Tommy Rose. <laughs> yeah. Oh, this kid will be like a grown man now. But, um, was this 2014 this was yeah 20, eight, eight years ago so he made what what does it say there 15,000 pounds in profit 14k 14k this for kid for a made. black market school tuck shop yep he was what was he selling he was selling um, uh, let me find out mate <laughs> wait what Tommy from what, what started selling this years ago I'm being inspired by Dragon's Den <laughs> nice <laughs> I'm going to start selling fucking <laughs> Harry Bar he was selling like Lucas A Doritos fucking and this Dairy is, milk. This was back when um, Lucas Aid actually tasted nice. Because what happened was, I think this was around 2017, right? So this is how I know this. This is how I came by the knowledge. Um, one day... 14K. I'm, yeah, fair play to the I'm selling Doritos in that. Fuck off. Fuck supply this is de- bullshit. Supply and demand. Guy was selling cocaine. <laughs> I'm not even taking the piss. Like, there's no way you make 14 off school. Be- no way. There's no way. No. Nah. This guy was not... I need to get to the bottom of this, man. It's nice to know. Oh, mate, the politicians are at it, man. Apparently, uh, you know, like you go into the House of Commons toilets, man. It's just coke along the to- toilet oh, seats. Mate, everyone's on coke, mate. They're well coked up. You see them, like I don't get, I don't get the fucking appeal, mate. I really don't. Like every time I've took cocaine, I've just felt like, like you know, everyone's like, oh, you take coke, and you're like, oh, I've been like, I've just wanted to kill myself and go home and smoke a joint. Mm. Like. I've never liked coke. I did it once when I was like, I did I'm it. Like, co- why is my face numb? Why is my, t- you know yeah, what I mean? Like, I did it a couple of times it. when I was twenty-one. Never done it since. So that's what nine years ago. Never, never. Well, every, everything I was just saying was a joke. I'm actually an undercover cop. Maybe you want to put your hands behind your back. 
<laughs> put your hands behind your back and pull your trousers down. <laughs> Let's suck your dick. But you, you know, anyway, do you know uh, <laughs> what I'm saying day. about this uh, whole like this new wave of entrepreneurs and? Oh mate, that's this is actually what I was going to bring up. Sorry to really interrupt. No, it's like, You know, it'd be funny is to like being really aggressive, like, but saying really gay shit, like I'm gonna fucking pin you down and suck your cock. You know what I mean? Just, uh, fuck it for another time, innit? <laughs> I mean. <laughs> Depend where you are geographically, that's going to go one or two ways. No, but I mean, just as a joke, like, just, you know what I mean? It's going to cause a lot of confusion, I think. Exactly, that's the point. Especially if they're autistic. Like, you should just go to, like, an autistic screening of, like, minions and just start being aggressively sexual. Not to the kids, obviously, because they're minors. But, like, you know, to the, the you know, like, the the 30-year-olds that never really quite branched out of their autism. They they got the worst. You can't, you can't go to a minions film and do anything sexual. It's impossible. You, you know what though? You know what is on my bucket bucket list what? is to actually go to an autistic screening because I do technically qualify. Uh, I haven't got like a badge or nothing, but um, I've got some paperwork somewhere. You know what I mean? It's got, and I can, I get, I go into watch the autistic screening of whatever it is they're showing, just out of pure curiosity because the. I, I'm, but here's what I think it is. Here's what I think it is. I think it's just parents, and it's not gonna be that crowded. Like we're not, they're not selling out this place. Mm-hmm. You're just gonna have parents sat with their kids, and the kids just gonna be fucking running up and down and squealing and screaming. And there's no worry of, oh, you know, he's disturbing the other other families because that they're specifically at an autistic screen. I bet there's like one dude, like like Robert De Niro and Taxi Driver. It's like you keep it down, <laughs> trying to masturbate. <laughs> <laughs> his fucking trench coat on yeah with his little Mohican his little Tim Tim Warner Mohican like on, on the CCTV like the guys in the cinema I just seen some guy in a trench coat like. hey do you remember the cinema especially when it was like a big tentpole movie and you'd be sat there watching it and you see this one of the cinema staff come in and they have like these red binoculars what was that because I know it was to try and detect if uh if people were trying to pirate the movie, like filming it, recording it or whatever, but I don't know like if it actually had some degree of tech to it where they could actually see the, it would pinpoint the cameras through that, te- through those binoculars. I don't know. I don't know, but they never caught Uncle Mickey fucking stroking my cock. <laughs> Did they? No, I don't remember them. No, I do. But I went to the cinema a lot because when I was, um, what, what cinema was this? Odeon? This was Cineworld in Weymouth, because when I went to college, and this is during Labour government. Has that been Cineworld for, like, since you've been here? Yeah, yeah. That's been around for a while, hasn't it? One of the benefits of the Labour government was that we got what's got given EMA. So EMA. That's another unironic thing that's funny. It's just saying what, how much fucking money the Labour government fucking just jizzed everywhere for everyone. Yeah. And just like, oh, you want to open up a lampshade shop? <laughs> there you go. Oh, oh, um. Yeah, financial housing crisis. Sorry, no more money left. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like we're gonna have to build more houses in between houses. Do you know what's interesting about sandwich houses? <laughs> yeah. Oh, you know what's funny as well? Like, here's a, some something that's I. It's gonna be like Inception Shoon, where they open up a house yeah. inside a house. <laughs> yeah. This, here's some ironic stuff for you. So, um, the the word certain terms that get used on the on the on the on the news or like the politicians use, right? So when they talk about Brexit, though, I remember this one term, oven in deal. Remember that. They're saying oven in. Oven in. It was all about Brexit, and like it kept oh, going on for years and years and years. And then they, and then on the news it's like, so what's all this oven in? Have we even left the EU? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Have we done it? But go on Google and type in oven in Brexit deal. Oven in. <laughs> oh yeah, I do actually remember that now. Oven in threw me off, but yeah. Sorry, yeah, oven, ready. oven ready. That's yeah. how little I care about that term. Oh man, I couldn't give a fuck about the Brexit. But here was another thing as well, right? So I think that's what put me off the news forever. Every time I turned on, blah blah blah, blah. and you'd always have that that double chin bitch Maureen, like they would just grab any little fucking shrap. And have a little pie chart, and it like it barely moved. Like this is how close we are to Brexit. (laughs) We're having ready. We're we're this close. (laughs) My vagina's like a flapping pizza. (laughs) That's what I thought about Brexit. Yeah, no, fair enough. I um, I don't think I even know anything about Brexit. That's how much I give a shit. Uh, Should I though? Should I give a shit? I watched the, the, there was a film about it with Doctor Strange in it, Benedict Cumberbatch. He played uh, oh, what was his name? He got sacked. See if you Dominic take, Cummins. He played Dominic Cummins. See if you take the uh, b- 
batch out of his last name, what do you get? <laughs> Benedict Cum. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, he played Dominic Cummins in what film? In a film about Brexit. About is it good? It's actually not bad, actually. Yeah. So the the whole st- I don't mind the films that are like pop, like yeah. So what it was right? Politician the, shit. I, I'm pretty sure. I'm ninety percent sure it's Dominic Cummins, right? Because there's always like there's two guys involved that I always get get mixed up, right? <laughs> See if you take the mings out of Dominic Cummins. <laughs> <laughs> I'm joking. <laughs> Carry on. Carry on. <laughs> Um, sorry, I fucking like. So this, I don't know the backstory too much. I only saw this film once, but because um, I didn't care about Brexit when it 2016 I'm all about because I was too busy being miserable at my own jo- in my job at the time in the office. I was shooting, th- I was hitting three bongs, three three shotties a night, every night without fail. Hardcore, mate. That's but because that's how little I cared about my life at that time. I mean, not that I, I wasn't like depressed or nothing. <laughs> I was just, yeah, you know, I was depressed, but I wasn't like suicidal or nothing. Like that. I was just really miserable. You ever had a feeling, right? So Brexit like, when I, issues. Sorry, carry on. Like when I first ever started getting depressed, I didn't understand the feeling. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Like I wouldn't know how to articulate how I was feeling because I'd never felt it before. It's because our brain hadn't fully developed. Because like, when we're younger, we we run a lot more on emotional. Like our, I think it was like my early twenties. I really started getting it. Like. But I think that's because your frontal lobe starts to develop fully. Mm-hmm. When you're younger, you're running off your uh, hippocampus and your um, amygdala, which is more based on emotions. And it's not until we're older that we begin to r- rationalize our environment. We start to rationalize our own emotions and our feelings. Like anxiety, I, I didn't know really how to describe that. Like uh, when I first started getting it, like. Well, it's mainly just like the fucking rooms closing in on you and that, and you just want to be on your own. That's kind of what I feel like anxiety is. But I wouldn't know how to explain that to people, and like that's why I shut myself away a lot. Like people start calling me a hermit, and like, I just wanted to sit in my room, play games and shit, like be on my own. You know what I mean? Not not bring anyone else down to the fucking level I was at. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it kind of, it kind of ruined a lot of re- friendships I did, but like I didn't care. I didn't know how to articulate it. Do you know what I mean? And I wasn't much of a fucking. But genuine friends will accommodate, will work with you rather than against you during those and moments. And they did, and the ones that like were did. It's interesting, isn't it? When we start to understand, it's like my dad with his undiagnosed PTSD, and it wasn't till way later when he was like fifty. Yeah, when you start to understand it, it's easier because then you can just. Yeah, can, you can you can say to people like, yeah, I'm just a bit down today, and that, you know what I mean. It's so and much you, easier. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's off your chest because you can just say, oh, I'm not feeling too good today. If you've got personality uh, uh, bipolar or anxiety disorders, or maybe you've got some form of disassociative identity disorder, or whatever it is, whatever caused it, it, it's so much easier to be able to say in this day and age, and and like being genuine about, it, not like not mm, you're a dickhead, not milking it. So I know. Oh yeah, like. That's what gets me the worst, actually. That's I think that's the worst thing I can think of for me is when people emotions to social media expecting, like with the expectation of. It goes back to what I was saying though, the the strokes, and I've been guilty of this as well, even quite recently because. But it, it, nah, it's different when you just want to try and get a laugh or a bit of attention. I don't mind that so much, but it's the it's the depression or mental like that's personal. You should really like text someone or. You get, like, I hate it when people advertise it. Do you like, know my, my my pet peeve is when uh, people will put a kind of ambiguous status, but you kind of get the gist that they're very unhappy about something or someone. They're in, indirecting it at someone. Yeah. Just and not then, mentioning it. And then the comment section will say, everything okay, hun? It's like, oh, and, uh, who's, who, who are you talking about? And it's like, I'll DM you. But back <laughs> yeah. then it wasn't DM. Right. Here's a question for you, right? At what point did PM become DM? At what point did it go from personal message to direct message? I think the older generation still say PM because my mum says PM. Yeah, I say DM now. Yeah, I say DMs. But I, when? I think I think it's just like a YouTube thing. I like just s- slang. Just it starts. Someone starts saying, it, "Oh, in the DMs." Yeah, like, and it just can't caught on. Sometimes you do. We do pick up because we, like I say, we're the fifty-fifty. Like we still old school, but sometimes we pick up the new lingo and incorporate into our fucking old school language. You yeah. know what I mean, we're like, we're very yeah. adaptable because. We can be. We got the best of both worlds. So but then again, saying that some abbreviations I'll see and I'll be like, "What the fuck does that?" Yeah, mean? and I have to yeah, Google yeah, I've it. Seen a few of them. I've seen a few of them. Oh, uh, what was one of them? There's an abbreviation for everything, though. Yeah, like literally everything. Like um, NVM was one for ages, and it's never mind. But, I'd, but for ages, I was like, "What the fuck is that NVM?" Like, I like to think that I'm quite adaptable when it comes to changing the changing culture, especially when it's becoming more and more rapid. 
But I was having this, um, I was watching this video, this little mini documentary, and I was talking to this, uh, talk about this to Rachel, and I want to get your take on this. And we kind of touched on it yesterday when we were talking to Rack. It was this whole idea of rationalization. But when I'm when I'm saying rationalization, I don't mean it in the in the in the in the context of rationalizing a situation, right? I mean rationalization meaning with a advancing culture, we will naturally choose efficiency over everything else. In, in other words, efficiency always wins. Because let's get, I'll give an example, right? Let's say you've got Greg's and you've got a family owned independent bakery. Okay. Now efficiency wins because most people just want to go into Greg's and grab the sandwich and go. It's few people, there the, the are fewer people who stop and, and incent, use their incentive to think, oh, I want to support a local business. Most people will just choose Greg's because oh, of like its efficiency. A mainstream outlet. Like they'd rather just go yeah, to like, like a, McDonald's a, instead of a fucking... corporate conglomerate because efficiency meaning whether it be efficiency, efficiency because of lower price, efficiency because it's made quicker. You know, if you're living in a very metropolitan area, and you've got three minutes to have your lunch in and out, Greg's, rather than the having it made from scratch and having to wait twenty minutes and have a little chit chat with the with the lady. It's just in a evening. bit of brainwashing, though. Really, it's advertisements and shit in it. Like they lure you in with the price and yeah. how nice it looks on the advert. Like mm. you know what I mean? Big Macs on the fucking adverts look like fucking chunky gourmet pieces of beef patty. You go in there, it's like a fucking mm. pencil dick. But um, the reason why I brought that up, the reason why I brought that up is I think that that's why I think that's why I talk sometimes about the whole machine utopia, where no matter where we go, but we're in, we're we're a bit different on that um that scale well, of things. I'm gonna bring that rationalization into the argument, right? Because I still, before you begin, like I still just can't imagine, like, cause we'd have to program it to be, in, yeah. But that's the origins, right? Let me let me let me broaden it for you right okay. one more puff and then I'll, I'll elaborate right so when you think about efficiency when it comes to consumerism right mm-hmm. people would rather choosing the quicker cheaper option because you know time is money or whatever you want to say you know so, so would you say like we are genetic we are predisposed we- instead of going into Morrison's and buying like beef from the freezer just buying a Russell's burger is yeah. that same thing yeah Technology is tied to capitalism and it's tied to efficiency or rationalization, right? That is kind of one of the reasons why technology exists in our... Anyway, right, so, sorry, the weed's hitting me a little bit, bit, bit hard, so I'm losing my words. You still ain't done your fucking bong yet. I know, I'm going to do that in a bit, I'm going to do that in a bit, right? But I think that the end game is already predetermined because it ends with us becoming machine or we become a, a, we go from a carbon based life form to a silicone based life form and I'll tell you why I think I think you're on the right tracks there like I'm going to say 200 years right I can see men and machine combining yeah. Yeah. and the reason why is because even as we are now biologically we are kind of hardwired towards efficiency and rationalization we just want to make things sleeker we want to make things more effective we want to make things faster more efficient you know what I mean and you look at our habits as consumers you see rationalization happening as we evolve and it's going to happen with us it's like oh i don't need to eat food anymore because it's all done for me i have a fucking that's getting dangerously close isn't it everyone's just blending shit and drinking it isn't they that's what i mean no Uh, one's eating anymore and we're still in the early days of it right and then this fucking plant-based shit's getting shoved down our fucking throats like you will eat the grass you cunt it's getting fucking shoved down our throat mate like the McPlant. But you know what's great, right? Fuck off. I've already spoken about this before in previous podcasts, right? But I'm talking about this whole post-industrialism that's going to be creeping in to our, into our society, into our culture, right? Where we don't need farmers anymore. We need technicians to run the farm. We no longer grow plants and seeds. We artificially inseminate them, like, and even people as well. I mean, this is, you know, this has been influenced by a book that I'm reading at the moment. It's a cyberpunk novel called Behind Blue Eyes. And uh, that really kind of talks a lot about eugenics and uh, artificial insemination or whatever you want to call them people that are made rather than born and it just seems like the natural end point for our species because it's like that's all we care about deep down is efficiency that you're gonna I think it requ- it requires a degree of conditioning and un unbrainwashing for someone to think 
oh, you know what? I'm just going to go for the nice, slow, steady life. I'm going to spend 20 minutes at my local baker's supporting the local business. Like I get that. There's always going to be that, but there's less of that than there is efficiency. Yeah. Because you go to... And you can't save everyone, mate. Like, the open-minded ones now, you just can't fucking save everyone do you know what I mean like we were saying in the car like after t- when the world didn't end after 2012 we kind of like give up on conspiracies and that not give up but like close our minds a little bit do you know what I mean yeah the, the, and, and, the batshit and, crazy cons- oh what was I getting to there talking about 2012 and conspiracy theories nah, before that what did I say talking about uh, you can't save everyone yeah like that's when that's when the needle dropped for me when I was like not ev- not everyone can be saved not everyone can have is going to have an open mind about things. Mm. Like, there's always going to be people that are like... You know, I was raised, whatever you want to call this, nature versus nurture, because it's really hard to distinguish between what is something that I've been taught by my parents or those closest to me, and what is something that was innate, was what they call, in, you know, it's innate. Nature versus nurture, right? I can't distinguish, I can't figure out the difference between what was something that was taught to me by my parents? Like what, what values were endowed on me and what was something that was innate? All right, so what is already within me mm-hmm. and what was given to me, what was endowed upon me? And one of them being that I've always been altruistic in terms that I do, I'm empathetic and I do care about other people. I'll have the occasional lapse in judgment where I'm not thinking, especially when I was younger, because again, it's using- That's still part of how your brain's wired. That's still part of your- yeah, that's what syndrome. What is, like, you know, Asperger's, you know, I think. But I mean, yeah, but like that, that's. I don't think you can ever like get rid of that. It's not that I don't mean get rid of it, but I'm, like, what was, what was in my already in my DNA when I was born, and what oh, yeah, and what yeah. was I'm saying it's hard to distinguish between like what you were taught, but as it's growing up. Yeah, like what was I'm, instilled in you. Yeah, as a child. like was I born a caring person or was I taught to be a caring person? I I, I definitely got my empathy off my mum, like hundred mm-hmm. percent. Dean, Dean doesn't have it <laughs> No offence bro He doesn't have no empathy But I've got loads of empathy Like um, for example like See I do something mean Straight after I'll be like oh, fuck, fuck, I have to go Yeah even if like, I'm like, I remember I kicked this ball away When like with these kids I just booted it over the fence I was like sorry lads I'll go get it <laughs> Like you know what I mean I could have just walked away And been like a dick One time right I'm 26 I'm on a train I was about 13 though right. I'm like, I don't do this as an adult I don't kick kids balls away just clarifying that <laughs> when I was 26 I was on a train from mm-hmm. Dorchester to Weymouth it's no different than Catherine to Corby uh, I worked there I was a lifeguard and I'm coming back and I'm in a bad mood anyway I'm tired and uh, I just sat on the train I'm just whatever in my own thoughts in my own head and there's a bunch of kids on scooters just minding their own business by the table and this uh, wino comes screaming and ranting at them mm-hmm. and suddenly I was like I fucking I want this I want this to pop off <laughs> All right. <laughs> He starts physically getting quite aggressive by picking up that. And this guy's really drunk, right? And he starts pulling on their scooters and all that. These kids are only 12, right? As soon as that hand touched that scooter, I'm up, right? <laughs> yeah. And I fucking toss my bag to one side and I'm fucking going at him, son. I, I, didn't, I didn't physically. I'd attempt. love to have seen this, you know. I was going at him verbally. Yeah, yeah. He was like, oh, and I'm like, oh, I wasn't even mad at him. I was mad at someone else. <laughs> Just mad. And I was just taking out on him. I was like this it's like guy like Eminem and on the bus listening to his music like. yeah and the train stops and the conductor shows up and he shakes and the wino shakes my hand and runs away right because at first you could see he was ready to uh, go somewhere it was going to get physical yeah to a bunch of 12 year olds well no between me and him oh. and then uh, he would have stood a chance mate. and then he fucking but I wasn't looking I wasn't looking forward to it you know what I mean I just wanted to have a little shout I didn't want to start fighting someone but uh, I didn't want to use these guns in public but uh, anyway, it ended non-violently, and I was the, I was a hero to those kids. As soon as I got off the train, right, the train conductor, me and him were exchanging a few words. He and then the train conductor, you could tell that it was the end of his shift. Cause he's like, yeah, whatever. And I leave the train, and these kids are like, Whoa, like I'm their hero, right? I didn't feel good. I felt like shit yeah. because even though I did the right thing, I, I was I did a dumb thing because in hindsight, that guy could have been packing. That guy could have. Uh, not saying it could, uh, you know, these I mean, days, yeah, possibly. But this possibly. was this was four years ago. I was twenty six. Uh, but the point is, it's going back to four you. years ago. I think you're still safe from a shank. And yeah. these days, nah, like, but um, not eight year olds got shanks. I don't know why, but they do. Yeah, and man bags. I don't know why, but, but I do. um, I could have. I mean, I'm not. That's why they sell their chewing gum in. Man bags. Man bags. Zip came like zip. 
one pound of pop lads he's like sick boy from train spot he's got the shoe with like the little fake fake heel he's <laughs> <laughs> so got the needle and the heroin in it still on his heel he's like night <laughs> clubbing <laughs> night clubbing with his noodle hair like, <laughs> <laughs> sorry sorry, sorry with his pot noodle hair your noodle hair's cool have you got the pot noodle horn but like what trend is that like you know what I mean what I don't know where did like, that stem from History, re- history repeats itself it's um but i don't ever remember back in our day noodle in the 90s though, more you, like... you had the jerry curl though didn't you jerry curl yeah but it was more of a oh, google it google it, it, it jerry is it jerry curl I, I think so what is it it's yeah. like that side i i make a joke of it and say it's like side not sideshow bob what was his brother called what was sideshow sideshow bob's brother called cecil cecil so the picture of cecil coming cecil, up right now Cecil bob and that's what my nephew looked like my youngest nephew came and I don't know what type of hair that is. I don't know if it's a jerry curl. I don't know if it's um, perm. It's a perm. What am I going to type perm? Yeah. Perm hairdo. 2022. Male. Male. Or androgynous. <laughs> Non-binary. Non-binary. Non-binary noodle hair. <laughs> 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 yeah, that's it. It's a perm. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, well, that's a perm then. I thought it was a Jericho. I was looking into it too much. Jericho's, I think, Ice Cube more and Boys in the Hoods. Black community in it. Yeah, Jerry- but I didn't know if it was just Jericho like, twenty twenty two. This word's thrown around a lot. Cultural appropriation. It's when a different, eth- not a different ethnicity, a different race imitates a characteristic from another race. I think they call it cultural appropriation. But it's, <laughs> it's just an idea. <laughs> <laughs> I can't take a Jericho seriously, man. <laughs> I really can't. <laughs> it's just fucking ridiculous. Remember that was a fad. Wet look, Joe. Like dudes would be coming in in year seven with fucking like wet hair. Oh, I did it as well. I used to use Braille cream when I was thirteen, right? So Braille cream's all right though. Uh, it, when I was thirteen, it stiff, this, isn't it? this is what it looked like when I was thirteen, right? This is before I started parkour. I had a round face, right? But they, th- there's us making fun of like <laughs> people yeah. now. Like we had some fucking Mate, nightmares. Right. So right? when I was thirteen, right? Round face, hunched shoulders really gangly and disproportionate with my body like just that awkward age mm. and uh i just had that flat greasy hair and then i put braille cream in it and it'd be like it'd be like a fucking you know you got I mean? any pictures from then i think so somewhere before <laughs> i used braille cream right, i used to use water right so when i started like you know it inspired me this is a confession for you right, right. when i first watched zoolander right i'm like 11 years old at the time and i'm watching zoolander and that his hair and that opened an intro of right. like it, and then him with, on the red carpet because don't forget when you're 11 years of age and you're like me you just sort of imitate your environment it's what we discussed on a previous podcast about Asperger's you mimic what you perceive to be socially successful right and I was not socially successful in my oh, youth yeah, yeah. right so I'm I'm being massively influenced by these films and TV shows and one of them was Zoolander when I was 11 and you look at Ben Stiller being this uh, airhead is that why you used to power a lot no, nah, I never. I, no, pouting was just a thing I did by accident. It was just you didn't realize you're doing it, and then you look and fucking. Uh, I kind of yeah. just made that up, but now you've just admitted something else. So <laughs> I didn't. Yeah, I pouted. <laughs> I, just, I just made that up. But it was like a very subtle pout. It wasn't because of Zoolander. You didn't stand there though, just going. Like, just standing there, did you? Oh, I don't fucking know. I'm so I glad. I, I don't remember. I'm so that. glad I take photos the way I do now. Just like people taking photos of me I never take a photo of myself people take and I it's do like, now and then and sometimes be like, oh, I don't know. I'll upload that one yeah and then 10 years later I'll be like oh, what was I thinking <laughs> so I'm watching Zoolander and there's that opening scene very kinetic and it's him getting his hair done up and all that and does the old blue steel shit and mm. then the next scene is him going to the uh, modeling event the MTV VH VH1 mm. whatever it's called right and it's him going there and it's all the fucking all the celebrity cameos as Zoolander everyone's loving him and me my stupid 11 year old brain's like Oh, he's very socially successful. Not realizing that's a movie, by the way. <laughs> <Some> fucking comedy. <laughs> yeah, a mediocre comedy at that. It's got its moments, but it's pretty mediocre. Why is why did that blow up? Carry on, actually, carry on first. All right. Um, and yeah, so I decided the next day after watching that, I'm going to gel my hair. I went away on my lunch break. There was a girl I fancied. I'm not going to say who she was, but I fancied her. And I was like, right, well, if I could be more socially successful, she'll be into me more. All right? She just extorted me for money. <laughs> You know what I mean? I, I, I paid for her cigarettes. I funded her cigarette habit. <laughs> and she just fucking... And you know what? In my head, it seemed like a really reasonable transaction. Oh, if I give her 20p, she'll just chat with me for 10 minutes. That's really nice. It is a creepy confession for you. All right, okay. Remember them, like, 
clubs you'd go to from a school. They're like, we're in year seven, eight, and nine. Like, I'm not, this is not no Nazi shit. But, like, you know, you'd get those, like, club nights when it'd be, like, Thursday. And, like, I only went to one once, and that was, was just passing. Yeah, I, was, I, was I went shameful. to, like, three. Yeah. I, went, I didn't go to many. I went to, like, three. But, like, the girl I fancy at the time, I'd, like, if they're, they're dancing, I'd just try and dance near them and do some, like, weird dance shit. I'm thinking, I'm thinking in my head, I'd be like, oh, this is, they're digging this. Like, they weren't. They they must have been looking at me like, what the fuck is that weirdo doing? I can imagine you, like, renting and train spot and, like, with long he... hair and that, like, <laughs> like, fucking doing the robot. Like, <laughs> she thinks this, this is making her wet. <laughs> you going like this? <laughs> No, I just did a row on some like weird moonwalky shit. Like, I don't know. I can't dance. Drinking really panda pops and even though I won a dancing contest in like Haven in like 2013. Oh no, way. Mate, I, we went yeah, and um, no one signed up except me and Dean. Dean, <laughs> Dean, Dean sang Elton John. What tune is it? Fucking. That's why they call it the blues. <laughs> so you sang that, and right, it was just awful. We didn't know any of the words except them bits. So it was like the whole song of him being silent, and then he'd sing that bit, and then it'd go silent again until the chorus came back <laughs> in. Like he didn't know any of the words. There was a guy. That I went up and fucking danced. Like I just did like the robot and some like moonwalk thing. Oh, and then I won, but the prize was a holiday for the next year because there were only two of us signed up. I got some like Teddy and shit. <laughs> Man, I was like fifteen. Like I don't want to fucking Teddy. What the fuck? I didn't want to sign up to this shit. <laughs> And then when I finished it, it went on for like 10 seconds. I didn't, I was much shy and nervous. Mm. Everyone was like, carry on in there. I was like, I don't know. <laughs> no. You know, it's funny. I um, I just want to add on to that um, whole being su- socially successful. Mm-hmm. I go through my teenage years being more awkward than was the standard back then. Like we all went, reckon, though? we all went through awkward stages in our adolescence but for me it was just a little bit more awkward because of just the way I was but what's funny is is that things that are attributed to my brain the way it is would work in my benefit you just gotta think though right of all the people that we hung around with you were a constant mainstay so like that's gotta say something isn't it like we didn't you know what I mean oh yeah I was never ostracized from the group and that's why I'm forever grateful for the group that I did eventually fall into. Yeah. Even if people came and went and it's just me and you now, technically. But um, it was cool. Like, I'll give an example. It's like, I would always try different things because I'd very often struggle to find my footing in other groups. All right? It's a very difficult one for me. It's hard enough when you leave your, leave your hometown to start somewhere new at 16 years of age. But even just like at work, all the jobs I've had, I'd always struggle to fit into the friendship group. But what make one of the benefits of that was is that I was always constantly moving around. So I'd pick up little tricks and trades here and there, you know what I mean? I'd different jobs. I'd learn how to be a fucking swimming instructor. Yeah. Oh, here's a story for you, right? So I remember I make a- All right, so I I'd been working at the holiday park for a couple of years on and off by this point and they kinda of wrote me into being a swim instructor. I didn't want to do it, but I was like, because you don't get paid any extra for this, but you don't have to pay for the qualification. So next thing you know, a week later I'm a swim instructor. And there was this one woman. I don't even know what her real name was, but me and this other swim teacher called Joe, we called her Barbara Bush. Because, and I'll tell you why we called her Barbara Bush. She's wearing, Let me guess. Did a bush hang Oh, on. bro. Right. So I'm teaching her the backstroke. <laughs> right. And she came in with like a walking stick. Right? I don't know what was up with her, but she just had those atrophied legs and that fucking round body, you know, and that she just looked like a female Yoda you know what I mean and I get her in the pool and I'm like right Barbara lay back and she's laying back right and you just see these fucking jellyfish tentacles coming to right against the brow <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean and I'm like I, I'm trying not to look at her bush right but it's so there that you know bearing in mind I'm not a chameleon right but I've got a kind of a pretty good 180 degree view of, of my reality at any given moment right so in my peripheral vision is just these fucking tentacles these brown tentacles just there and I'm just like trying not to acknowledge that oh my god and then I said to Joe I was like have you seen Barbara Bush and he went I saw it it's like me and him would uh, like be taking turns on who's got Barbara but then she'd always pretend to like fall like bearing in mind the pool's about a meter deep 
right? We're in the shallow end. And uh, she would like start, like she'd pretend to fall. She was blatantly put, faking this, right? And then grab my arm, grab my shoulder. And, uh, you know, and then she kept asking for me more and more. Sorry, Joe. Barbara Bush was into me more than she was you. And, <laughs> and uh, so that's, that's, that was one of the, but, so I went on a bit of a tangent there because I'm talking about one of the, all the different things I've tried Did in one life. One of the bushes ever snapped loose and like, Oh man, I don't even want to think about it. Alright. Yeah, I shouldn't even pull that up to But um yeah, I so I I became a swim swim teacher. I became an archery instructor. I became a fencing instructor. I became a rifle instructor. <laughs> Porn star <laughs> <laughs> Mate, I was a butler in buff once. Wait. Oh mate, I'm not proud of this whatsoever, but I got paid hundred and twenty quid for that one but night. In the buff. Like buttony. I wasn't even in shape back then. All right, so <laughs> fat butler. <laughs> no, I wasn't fat, I was under I was under I, my under my usual fight. <laughs> under my usual fighting weight right okay I'd been I hadn't really been settled down and I finally got into this new job and I was like right. was that loose yeah you know what I mean I was just a bit under undernourished mm. in my head anyway I'm sure yeah, I was yeah. just fine I was just normal but I get a phone call randomly and like oh we need you to be a butler and buff we've been let down I wasn't even driving by this point I was like well, where are you at it's like oh we're in Preston it's like fucking Preston that's, two, bu- that's two buses away bus, two buses naked <laughs> no, no, no I was dressed when I went there <laughs> They provided me with the outfit. <laughs> <laughs> or lack thereof. Just me. So <laughs> come prepared like that. Right. So I'm like I'd have said yes because I was not being offered 120 quid for yeah, two yeah. hours work. I show up to this property, right? There's a bunch of women in their forties. And then they just chuck this grass skirt at me. A and this tiki ho- one. Yeah, a yeah. little tiki one, little tiki grass skirt. <laughs> and then they throw like this lay at me whatever they call it you know what I mean the things that go around you what the two coconuts no not the coconuts uh, no, no just a flower like little necklace thing what oh, do they call the it oh the fucking Mardi Gras shit yeah whatever Mexico, Mexico, so I go up Hawaiian. I go up to the room right and I get myself dressed and I'm just staring at myself wearing this fucking grass grass skirt right it's March right I'm not I'm not tanned at right. all right and I'm and I'm like Ben Stiller in a long cane poly like I'm just on my own just doing push ups <laughs> trying to get a pump on right just doing <laughs> so, just doing like uh, just slavering yourself oh mate I just shit. banged out fucking four, 35 push ups it was just on the spot just banged them out like oh, oh I'm ready and then they're taking photos and all that and I'm like fuck and then I set up a little beer pong table for them and stuff and, <laughs> and then the, and then some of the women started bickering among themselves and it turned into a fight and I left I got paid and I left one of them went imagine two fucking guy in a tiki shirt scared to break out <laughs> come on ladies calm down fucking... come on you're better than this <laughs> your balls hang <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry I just fucking I forgot to wear bockies that's how I got me too man <laughs> testicle on the old thigh wearing a grass skirt just like you ever wear those bockies that are like slightly too big and your balls like hang out would you ever like when they lose their elasticity after like a year and a half yeah and you're wearing shorts yeah and you're playing football with your mates it's and nice and this fucking it's nice in the summer when um, you know you need a breeze and you're laying in bed. Yeah. You're just in your underwear, your baggy, your outstretched yeah. baggy. Your mum comes in looking for a fucking pen or something, and your balls are hanging out. With you just shorts. got you just got a bit of brain no, hanging I, there. <laughs> I'm seeing your testicles since you were five years old. Jesus, no, no. But uh, so anyway, uh, I keep going on these tangents, these little excursions I've had in my career. But I remember that one moment, just looking myself in that mirror, in that grass skirt, just thinking, how the fuck did I wind up here? I was just chilling in my home getting blazed and now I'm wearing a grass skirt. <laughs> about to, you know. About to fucking make some money. But then, and obviously I'd ordered myself all up and all that and I remember like leaving in my regular clothes just feeling that fucking baby oil on me. And uh, and I kind of felt, I felt like Jennifer Connolly at the end of uh, of um, Requiem for a Dream. Yeah. You know, like her, there's uh, four storylines going on all at once and three of them are pretty fucking tragic and then there's her with all the money even though she had to get gang banged for it <laughs> but you know she's happy at the end she's got her money and uh, I kind of felt like that walking out of that nice home with my chest all oiled up I was like I feel like I lost a part of me in that transaction a little bit of me died you just did what you had to do in it mate think of it like that yeah sometimes you have to do what you gotta do in it well the reason was is I was in between jobs so I just started the new job at the office and obviously I'm only gonna get half a paycheck so that kind of helped that did sort me over so yeah, that's what I'm saying. You got to do what you got to do. You know, I I like how the Gen Zs are a bit more sophisticated about it now. They're not having to wear grass skirts. They're just selling selling chewing gum, isn't it? Hubba yeah. bubba. 
Doritos and that. <laughs> just, and cocaine. <laughs> cocaine. <laughs> Bit of marijuana on the side and that. Some mag- magic mushrooms. Yeah. Magic mushrooms. But another job I had as well was I was a rifle instructor. Just for air rifles. I'm not going to like try and glorify it. It was an air rifle. You can't, yeah. you, you'd struggle to kill someone with an air rifle. You, you know I mean? Mm-hmm. One shot's all you got and then you got to reload it. It's like... <laughs> But I got good. I was good at it, you know. I mean, I'm I'm, le- I'm a left-handed rifle shooter. So um, me and Rachel start dating, and we're only like not even three weeks into the relationship. I take it to Winter Wonderland, yeah. and uh, there's a little target shooting section. And I was like, and the guy goes to help me load the gun. I was like, no, no, <laughs> I got this. I got this. And it's like that scene in Hot Fuzz where it's like, ba-ding, ba-ding, ba-ding. <laughs> like, so I've got the rifle. I'm doing it from standing, and mm-hmm. like, because because I did it all the time. I just got all three targets and one how a little gingerbread teddy bear. A little gingerbread man, teddy bear. It's a good way to make an impression, isn't it? Oh, mate, she was. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a. It's like Niagara Falls. Oh, mate, she was gushing. She was gushing, and but the funny thing is, it all ties back to like all these different skills and trades I've learned along the way. Be, being the way I am, what's that? She was gushing. Oh, she. You can see it in her eyes, mate. She was gushing. You can see it in her pants, mate. Yeah. You can see it in the wet pants. It was dark because it's winter, but you know, I could smell it. <laughs> Smell the two p, <laughs> two p p's. Oh mate, do you I ever, remember I was working in RS, right? Do you ever? Sorry, I just want to say real quickly. Have you ever gone down on a woman, and it's like putting your tongue on the end of a nine volt battery? <laughs> yeah, mate. That's literally <laughs> what I was about to say. <laughs> like someone asked me once, like, like what it tastes like, because they wanted my opinion, and I was like, it just tastes like fucking a one p, mate. <laughs> a nineteen ninety six one p. <laughs> when the queen hasn't got a double chin yeah yeah it's fucking an old school one pee mate they didn't, add, like. they didn't add that chin into what 97 like, but I'd love to know what a penis tastes like no yeah, I don't imagine it tastes like a Solero <laughs> it's got a taste for a bit funky isn't it? like a Cornell like, but chicks love it don't they and that's sucking dick <laughs> except lesbians they don't like cock yeah true they like the fucking sandpaper <laughs> do you reckon that's what it was in school they're like oh, this sandpaper's nice I want that on my vagina I don't know, maybe. I'm just but, um, off the dome, innit? Just to wrap up everything that I was saying, I mean, it was a really long roundabout way, but it ended up in some funny stories, little side notes, but um, all these weird, weird, these little eccentricities about me, these idiosyncrasies about me, the nerdy Asperger side of me kind of led to me doing all these cool, cool shit in life, that kind of like... You ended up like discovering what you love doing, innit? Like, yeah, like you just. Anyway. I think that's what life's all about. Because, yeah, I'm gonna go a bit deep for a minute, right? But, yeah, you know, I, I, I've been going through phases in recent months where I've been feeling overwhelmed by my own expectations, because I wanted to succeed at whatever it was I was doing, you know, podcasting or the book or what that. And I'd feel this sort of burden of responsibility, and I'd, it was all self self inflicted. I did this to myself, and it's only really now that I've started coming out of it. Where I'd be really uptight, and I was so determined that I was going to succeed at whatever it was I was doing, whether it be fucking the book the podcast um whatever do my own thing you know making my own income mm-hmm. and in my brain i become obsessed with this hypothetical reality where i'm living the life i want to live where i'm not an anybody i'm it's not maybe generational wealth too strong a word but some form of wealth where it's like oh i'm gonna be okay i got you know the bills are paid yeah like spending money yeah and not, not like you know when that you I've spend earned. money and yeah. you're like Sometimes you're like, oh man, you know I mean? and it wasn't something. That not was, having to worry, just yeah, paying but, for shit. And also, it it wasn't something that was given to me. I I earned it. Yeah, yeah. You know, I worked for it. So I'd always keep building up this dream in my head. But every day that I woke up and I wasn't living that life, it would take a part of me, and I'd feel myself getting really agitated at the world around me because even on a subconscious level, I was becoming resentful to my environment, to the external. I was getting mad at those close to me not like openly mad but i'd be snappier i'd be more down and you know the last few days i've sort of learned to just let it all go and just be happy now like i was sat it's going to sound a bit hairy fairy but i went to the nove today after doing some errands in town and i just sat on the bench and it was a bit cloudy but i'm just in a nice place and um i'm just kind of going through the things in my head and the, the the wisdom i took away from that nice chilled moment was that um it was the word play just kept coming to my head. We're here to play, mm-hmm. right? And what was the other bit that I, that came to me that just really made me stop to think and reflect on things? It was, don't worry about the future. Don't worry about 
how many cells you're making and that actually did the right thing going and spending some time with yourself because sometimes you need that like mm. you just need to go sit and or even if it's in your house mate just sitting in your room just thinking about stuff not not even in an overthinking way but just like a perspective you know yeah and that was what was causing me to be so pissed off all the time and so and so like uh up and down in terms of levels of motivation but the word play kept coming to mind and it's like we're here to play and everything just all my insecurities all my fears and all my worries just went away because i just went play we're here to play don't worry about next week next month next year just play Mm -hmm. whether it be going to the gym whether it be putting pen to paper whether it be you know selling a few copies of the book or uploading a few podcasts play because that's what we're here to do and it's all about just fucking patience and being humble as well isn't it like yeah because appreciation how many people in this world were in a similar situation to me where they put tied so much emotion and put all their eggs in one basket in terms of this thing here i mean that can kill people yeah it can kill people and they put so much thought and they're just like i this will be my ticket to happiness right and they finally get it and they're like i'm still not happy it's like tying tying in success with happiness mm-hmm. is a bad thing to do because that's what I did essentially. That's where I went wrong. I was happiness and success had become synonymous with each other, and it's like no, 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 no. Happiness is happiness. So, so success or no success. Not expecting as well. Yeah, almost to be happy is to succeed, not yeah, the other way around. I think it, like if something you're doing just takes off randomly and you're not expecting it to, like you're like whoa. Mm. You know what I mean? But if you've put all your eggs in that basket and it takes off still, you kind of just like, well. Yeah, life's I've... trying to teach me something. It's trying to say, look, you're not going to get to the next level until you learn this last lesson because I feel like I'm being tested in life. We all get tested on different things, you know, that kind of put our morals into into flux and makes us have to reevaluate. Our values reevaluate how we feel towards other people how we feel towards ourselves what we think what we feel I'm, I'm rambling but the point i'm making is is that we are always tested and you can look at it from whatever perspective you want you can associate to christianity or judaism or hinduism or buddhism or spirituality or atheism psychology whatever it is you can pinpoint it to something based on what your belief is i've got that existential nihilist thing so it's kind of like a hodgepodge of all sorts of belief systems and uh but it was a very profound moment and I'm really glad I had it because I did feel a weight off my shoulders. It's like, it's almost nihilistic. It's like to give up is to be happy. Let it be, let be as the French call it, laissez faire. Pretty much, yeah. Let do, let be. Sometimes you fucking, just life throws curveballs at you, yeah. don't it? Like- do I believe in free will or do I believe in determinism? Which one is it? It can't be both. I certainly believe in limited free will. We have free will to do what we want, but we don't because there are consequences. I believe you're not going around murdering people and shit and, and raping motherfuckers. You should be allowed to do what the fuck you want. Yeah. Or, or ripping people off. No, but what I mean is, like, I'll give you an example. Right? When I leave to go to work, I have a choice to go left or right. Now, using free will, I have one. However, it's limited free will because I can only go left or right. You know what I'm saying? There aren't an infinite amount of choices. I can't go through the bushes into that guy's house. I won't get to work. <laughs> you could have just kept going straight I know but you know what I'm saying yeah, you could a lot of damage but yeah yeah. Well, that's what I'm saying <laughs> limited free will I can go left well, that's can... what I'm saying as long as you're not murdering or doing mad shit then yeah just do it do what the fuck you want but Irene believed in determinism she said life has its own journey well it goes beyond determinism it's called fatalism right so determinism means that you know I'm putting it in real simple terms here but determinism is that you know the, the universe is made up of math it's made up of numbers and it's mm-hmm. already been calculated in advance or in a way this is that yeah. basically time isn't it yeah or fatalism being a more the- speaking of time the clock's fixed oh is it yeah how oh, sound <laughs> um nice one i know i didn't fix it, I, I, I thought i felt different <laughs> it, time's actually moving now it's not stuck at someone to 11 <laughs> someone was watching our podcast they said your clock don't move <laughs> yeah, you're the first one hey <laughs> You send them a prize, but, send them a mug or something. So fatalism <laughs> is very much like determinism, but instead of it being more like, you know, you know, 
an atheist equivalent it's more determinism being more like you know math equations statistics what atheist believes in nothing don't they like nothing no they just don't really they're kind of indifferent to religion i think because then you've got agnostic people that are kind of like in and out a bit like me i don't know what was i believe in something like something must have happened whether it was like an atom blowing up somewhere i'll believe in the atom you know what i mean atheist no, because I still believe in something created us. Then uh, agnostic. There you go. But fatalism is more sort of like it's God's divine plan, sort of thing. Divine. We evolutionized from the Homo sapiens. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, we didn't. That was a good one. No, we didn't. But um, <laughs> but you know what I mean. So this Irene believed in. She was a fatalist. A fatalist. She was a really devout Christian. Do you right. believe that God had its own? He had it's it, it part of His divine plan. So for everyone's all of us. on mm. their own journey. Kind yeah, of and I'm more of a. I think I'm falling. I was free will a few years ago. Now I'm bang on determinism. Yeah, I'm bang on determinism because I'm just like, yeah, well, this whole universe is made up of fucking math, maths. So, so I'm trying to sound like an American. Math, it's like mathematic. Well, did you know what I'm on about that fucking little kid advert? Where she's like, yeah, there was a kid, right? Yeah. There was a, it was, it was fucking graphic. This was after ten was o'clock at night. Fucking terrifying. So this was after the watershed. This was Labour government, right? <laughs> yeah, I'm just spunking money again. Oh, they just, yeah, up they just, like, yeah, just fucking mate, have this kid getting ran over at thirty miles per. Hour. Before Netflix streaming service, we had Labour government's adverts. <laughs> you know what I mean? Awareness adverts, because like they were like, it, they was like its own little mini movie. Remember Julie knew a killer, where she's just in the car, and she's like keeping her eye on that white van. Yeah, and then the yeah. fucking white van just shows up she yeah. slams a brake and the guy behind her the kids behind her is not wearing a seatbelt so he slams into the chair yeah. and it crushes Julia and she's just laying there fucking dead and the girl next to her has got blood on her face and she's like ah! yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? and the kid's just got up. blood down his face he's just like huh? <laughs> right and it's like Julia knew her killer it was a guy not wearing the seatbelt and it's like that was the t- that was the twist of the little story mm-hmm. and then the other one was the kid all mangled up on the road and she's like if you hit me it's like the same voice to use for the for the for the, for the red queen and uh in resident evil is it the same shit no i'm joking it sounds similar actually when you say but it. the girl was just laying there like bless her heart and she's just an actor anyway she's fine it's the sound effects as well. like right it's like if you hit me at 40 miles an hour there's an 80 percent chance i'll die right and then the body it starts going in reverse like, the bones sh- start unbreaking she goes over the bonnet the glass goes back to where it was but if you hit me at 30 <laughs> and then she just gets up like brushes herself off like at yeah, blues brothers like, <laughs> yeah, that's when people start riding around at 30 miles per hour just knocking fucking Would kids you know? over and shit like dude she'll live <laughs> yeah it's okay off so did it 30 miles an hour well now you know i'll go home get out of here that, and the kid's that. just like that like I like how 30 oh, miles an hour the kids just brush themselves off. I got hit at 7 miles an hour I was not brushing that shit off I mean I was well, luckily I've never been hit by a car so. I was 4 at the time right this car was going around rocking a muse and again it was 7 miles per hour yeah it was coming around a corner right? very exact well between 5 and 10 alright All right, it just it just nudged me just <laughs> yeah I didn't go flying over the bonnet I didn't go that way I didn't go like team rocket style you didn't stand up wiping yourself down nah right? nah I just landed on my ass like <laughs> <laughs> right and uh, yeah but the point is, is I just don't like how nonchalant it is the girl just gets up and just alright Charlie you know Uncle Bob right alright yeah, fucking one who got blown up in World War 1 and bad back and not a nonce has weathers yeah fucking I remember him picking up I was from school junior school and uh, he's like waiting there for us this fucking senile old man Sean Dean and I'm like oh fuck it's Uncle Bob man he's gonna fucking kill someone <laughs> And he starts reversing, fucking, it must have been like two miles per hour. All you hear is, ba-doink. <laughs> fucking two miles, literally, he, he was not going, like, it was literally moving at fucking slow motion speed. And it was like, ba-doink. And the kid got up like, ah! And he ran out like, are you alright? And the kid ran off and he started chasing the little kid like, are you alright? Like fucking chasing this terrified kid who just got not- Anyway, yeah probably a fucking I have this random ass memory. minus one karma for Uncle Bob there when I uh, I'm, random memories sometimes you just get memories that have no real context to it they just exist as a soul entity yeah. and one of them happens to be me in year six and walking out of school and as I'm making my way I hear a horn blaring by the zebra crossing and I turn around and the guy's in his car and the horn didn't stop even though he took his hand off the horn 
he just went eh, but then the horn just kept going eh, oh, and you think. could just hear him tapping on the horn like fuck it out <laughs> <laughs> the horn wouldn't stop <laughs> yeah, big up Labour government on that one I remember we were in Spain in 2000 oh, how old was I I'm going to say like 11 and uh, my brother would be like 9 and I, and I met this Welsh guy and uh me and him just fucked around the whole holiday. Like, we'd go on the lift and jump up and down till it broke and that. And then we'd have to get rescued. And this one time, my brother was just minding his own fucking business, swimming along and that, doing his little practicing little paddle and that. Bless him. And we just fucking jump in and whip his trunks off and fucking... He's running through the hotel like, fucking John! I forget the Welsh guy's name, yeah, but... We, he's just my brother running butt naked, like... Like fucking like an NPC, you know, like those NPCs when they hold their. Me and my mum went to Butlins when I was thirteen. Fucking Butlins, man. I know, but we went all out. Like we proper went pimp my ride on on the accommodation. My mum like booked this six months prior. Yeah. Eight months prior, it was like July, August. And she fucking Stephen Mohan was your fucking butler and that. <laughs> Close enough. <laughs> but me being on the spectrum again I struggled to make friends during that whole week I was there like there was one kick you just wanted to kick the shit out of everyone about you no, no I wasn't angry then oh I was alright <laughs> not then I wasn't I angry I didn't smoke back. nicotine then <laughs> no, I didn't I didn't uh, put an insane amount of pressure on myself back then I just went through the motions and uh, but I struggled to make friends I made one friend a kid called Ollie and we were like this was proto um, content creators my mum was one of the first people to get a video uh-huh. Record it on her phone. It was a Nokia, and like, it was like one forty four p in terms of quality, right? Like, yeah. yeah. And you take a video, right? And I was going around with this Ollie kid, like we're doing our own little content creation, like, but we're just being like real dorks. Yeah. Like here's me on the gun machine. Me 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 me. But I'm thinking, <laughs> what's crazy about that? <laughs> that was like before. I mean, obviously, yeah, you had Jackass had already been out by this point. Hey, what gun sounds that? I don't know. Me 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 me. <laughs> Imagine that was a gun and cold. <laughs> me, 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 me. <laughs> yeah, like, the school shooter is still present. Me, 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 me. Get down. <laughs> <laughs> me, me, me. <laughs> Imagine the last sound you're hearing before you die. Is, me, 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 me. Oh. Oh. Your int- me, me, me. Your, int- <laughs> like your intestines coming out like sausages. <laughs> me, me, me. <laughs> I've been gut shot. Platoon on it. Some fucking mad army film. She's me, 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 me. Get down. The whole film platoon, but the gun sound effects have been replaced with. Me, 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 me. We need to do that. We need to do that. We need to fucking do something like that. Just a little sh- Just that scene in Terminator 2 when he comes out of the. Oh my god, it's a mini gun. Me, 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 me. <laughs> yeah, he's at the top of the skyscraper. Me, 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 me. Man. Or at the start when he's got the shot, he, you know, he's, you know how he's reloading yeah, it by yeah. swinging it around. When he it's shoots just, that, he shoots that security. <laughs> <laughs> he shoots that security guard in the knee. Me, me. He'll live. <laughs> when he's shooting the the liquid metal guy, and he's like going back, and he's like, <laughs> it's just me, 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 and his finger grows. Yeah, it fucking it, fucking hell. Anyway, so me um, <laughs> at Butlins, right? I'm like proto YouTube content creator in 2005 for. This is when, like, you know, what I mean, anyway. So I, just, I'm, I, it was the first time I ever. I went to go see War of the Worlds on my own, right? So I just went to. But the Tom Cruise one. Yeah, man. Well, obviously, yeah, I was good. It's mate. not the sixties. <laughs> yeah, the. <laughs> the <laughs> War oh, yes, of the Worlds. The Tom Cruise one. Yeah. The awesome um, Wells Radio version. Yeah. The one where everyone. You like, and Ollie just sitting there like, holy shit! <laughs> with my little Nokia. It's phone. fucking real. <laughs> They're little... coming. Come on, Ollie. Get my mum. Let's get the fuck out of here. <laughs> me, me, me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. So, so yeah, anyway, I'm, watch, about I'm watching War of the Worlds. Right? It's actually a really good film. I really enjoyed it. It is, man. I still think the original holds up, man. I think it's like creepy. I mean, it, it changed forever, though, when I saw a scary movie before. But <laughs> yeah, the, reason why, the, the, the reason why I brought up the whole Butlins thing, well, it was actually an accident, but it just ignited something in my brain I saw a woman with no neck while I was at the Butlins what right. do you mean her fucking shoulders start here <laughs> <laughs> swear to god mate you look this up on google it's called Nunn's disease what Nunn syndrome N-O-double N-double-O-N-E <laughs> N-double N-E syndrome <laughs> 
We should be laughing at this. No connects. <laughs> <laughs> no nipples. <laughs> no nipples. <laughs> no chin syndrome. That, well, that yeah, she had no. Chi- uh, yeah, no, I think she had a chin. She just had no neck. Save oh, a minute. It's a save it. a minute. It's a save a minute. Fuck it. <laughs> and uh, anyway, so as time goes on, right, I start questioning myself. I was like, did I really see that shit? Because I don't think that. How old were you? I was thirteen at the 13. time. Thirteen. All right, you know, and I'm like, I don't think that actually happened. I'm 20, like, roll the clock forward, I'm 24 now, right? I'm walking along Weymouth Seafront, I see the same fucking woman. No, same woman? No neck. Same woman? Same woman, same curly hair. Same buttons when you were 13? Yeah. Jesus. I like, well, mate, I mean, how many people look like that? How many people have got no necks? Exactly. How many people have got shoulders for eyes? And I was like, my, <laughs> I was like, fuck, she's a real person. She just goes around on holiday every year. Shit. Different coastal towns and she holiday resorts. She way before one year, fuck me. You know what I mean? I, I, I would imagine that she gets some form of discount on these sort of trips or these excursions. She's just living her life. Do you reckon she uses a neck pillow? <laughs> <laughs> she can, can she? She just she just gets a little beanbag and leans her head. <laughs> She's got a chair for her neck. Do you think well, she, she ain't got a neck? Do you, do you think she has a driving license? Because like you know you got to check your blind spots. Like she's just fucking <laughs> <laughs> like when she's doing a parallel park. <laughs> oh, she couldn't reverse. Not a chance. There's no way. She she ain't getting a license. She'd have to fucking stand up in her car and <laughs> fucking, yeah, she'd have to go out and check first before she can reverse. <laughs> and people are just like, holy shit! <laughs> holy oh my god! <laughs> Whoa! Like, where's your neck? Get inside! <laughs> Come on, boys. It's real. Lock the doors, boys. <laughs> the no-neck lady's like, I've got no fuel. Help me. <laughs> <laughs> Close the door, boys. It's how horror movies start. She's got no fucking neck. <laughs> um, I'm sure she's a good woman. You know, I, I think I never actually had any conversations with her. You know what I mean? Um, <laughs> At what point do you think in her life she thought, I'm, I'm, I'm <laughs> different. She's a Canadian or a Hello. <laughs> it's Say about it's a, it's a boot our lives. <laughs> Say it, Terrence. <laughs> um. Ah, <laughs> 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 uh, oh, fucking hell. So Butlins was all right, yeah. Yeah, yeah. good. And, uh, uh. Butlins was good. Haven, did you ever go Haven? I worked there. Yeah. I went to Devon Cliffs right on a on a, on a fencing course because what was Skeggy Butlins? Yeah, it was Butlins. And then you got like the shitty caravan park Ingle Mills is like down the road. Yeah, from Skeggy. I went Butlins once in Skeggy and met the Chuckle Brothers. I didn't meet them. I seen them live. Did you? There was a meme that I never made that I wish I had, where it was just a picture of Paul Chuckle car- He was Paul Bearer to Barry. <laughs> And like you can, to you. you can see, he was very uh, uh, distraught. This, well, of course he is. <laughs> His fucking brother just. I know, died. I know. But <laughs> well, he's not going to be happy, is he? No, no. But <laughs> like you know, yeah. I, I, I thought. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> I thought I thought Paul Chuckle was a method actor, so I thought he'd be keeping up that kind of happy-go-lucky. Like, <laughs> yeah, like uh, that was a missed opportunity that there wasn't a meme where it just has him saying to me, and then there's no response. <laughs> do you want to do this bong hit? Because I, I got a dry, so I can't. <coughs> okay. Sorry, Mum. Sorry, Margie. I was trolling. Um, Sorry, Susan. I'm talking to the audience here. I was, I was trolling Sean's grandmother on Facebook in real stealthy ways as well. I've never insult anyone. I've never insult anyone's grandmother on, on Facebook. I don't insult anyone, really. I don't participate in any form of discourse unless it's with people I know. Unless it's a joke, you know. Yeah, people can't a take a joke, then fuck you. And uh, Dean was saying some... Uh, Dad jokes, like, not dad jokes. Your dad, your dad works at fucking. Your dad sells Avon. Yeah, 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 yeah. But he's using a lot, drop a lot of f bombs and saying this that, and the other, which is funny. It's part. Of, it's his Facebook can do what he wants. But then your granny Margie comes into the comes into it. It's like Dean, the language is disgusting. And I just started trolling her. I said, let's half and half. <laughs> fucking but like what what are you looking forward to the most coming up anything anything like I tell you what I'm looking forward to I'm looking forward to nothing like you that's out now apparently it's bad oh is it but the reviews say but it's I weird. don't go by reviews I'm not that kind of the guy the thing is it was like how you can't really go wrong with animation can you 
it's an easy sell. But I'm more of a watching myself and have my own opinion. But the reviews are fucking bad. Oh no! Oh fuck! Fuck like you. Well, I can't see the ma- it's anything to do with the animation. It's obviously like the story and shit. Yeah, they're just like why? <laughs> I saw it and it looked beautiful. And I was like, oh. yeah, it does. It does look good. Like, oh. like visually. I'm actually looking forward to seeing Beavers and Butthead the movie. Because I'm gonna have to go and watch rewatch like the series and that because I've never really been into Beavis and Butthead. Not really. Yeah. I don't. I don't dislike it. It's just never resonated with me. The fucking huh, 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 like. You know what I mean? I don't know. I'll, have to, I'll have to go rewatch I th- it. I think why what, what makes it special is that a lot of it consisted of them just watching music videos and mocking them. But yeah. what it done was it actually really lifted a lot of careers because of what they did. There were some obscure artists on there. I'm gonna see what upcoming films are coming out. Just so, because I know I said nothing, but I want to see the, I want to see the Elvis Presley movie, but I'm kind of not too sure about Tom Hanks. The only thing that puts me off of that is the God, it looks nothing like Elvis. Yeah, I'm not gonna. Last time we mentioned Tom Hanks, the fucking recording device shut itself off. Yeah, no, it went quiet. It muted us for some reason. So, upcoming movies 2022. It was a blessing to disguise because obviously we had the Flash peasants with us, and we don't want, you know, they got careers to think about, and we don't want to be like. Just go and full save room on them. Yeah, and it, like we kind of had to, you know. So the audio equipment. I, I really enjoyed uh, Doctor Strange. To tell you, like mm. that was. Like, I don't usually go and watch films twice, but I wouldn't watch that twice. There's a Liam Neeson film coming out called Memory. Okay. Avatar two, obviously not for the story, for the visual spectacle. That's going to be. I'm actually going to go be seeing it in IMAX. Or- Prey, that's a great um concept of a game. Yeah, you know, um, like you're stuck in a space station with these like monsters that can transform into humans and mm-hmm. shit, and you as a test subject have to like you've got powers and shit, but you have to escape. Yeah, that's what the game's based on, and the movie's coming out, so I'm interested about that mm-hmm. actually. Anyway, what were we saying? Uh, oh, Top Gun Two was actually really good. That was that was awesome. Oh, the new Mission Impossible movies, you know, I really got into them. Number four onwards, I've really, I'm really into them. Top Gun. Well, Top Gun I've already seen, but I'm also looking forward to the other Mission Impossible movies. Oh, Because, oh, okay. num- like I said, number four onwards is shit hot for me. They're my favourites. I really want to see that everything, everywhere, all at once. That'll be out on DVD soon. No, I've got a bigger telly, man. We'll just get started yeah, and watch man. it one night. Really. I was thinking about the film The Machine from 2013. Remember I made you and Brett watch that? Why it is birds? Yeah, it, yeah, I remember that. Yeah, yeah. Did you like that film? I liked parts of it. I think I think the start was a bit long winded, mm. but then when it gets into it, it's good. I love that scene where our eyes just open. It's like machine open your eyes. And that film was made for a million and a half. That's how cheap that film was. And the special I mean, effects that's in that film for a million and a half is outstanding. It, yeah, but uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, like, it wasn't a shit film. It just, like I say, the the start was a bit, like, drawn out a little bit, I think. I think what people get pissed off by is that you get these sort of uh, cyborgs, these soldiers with brain implants, and they have the little little glow in their eyes, which was a massive inspiration for me for Foville. Mm-hmm. So there's soldiers... There's a war between England and China, or the UK and Britain and China, but because it's so low budget, it takes place mostly in interior places. There's very little exterior stuff going on. But it's fucking brilliant. And... um there's these soldiers that give them the brain implant and then their eyes shimmer and all that and they speak the, they begin speaking their own language mm-hmm. and there's no subtitles for the words that they're saying and that infuriated a lot of people but the director w- went on to say I wanted to keep it ambiguous you know what I mean it was their yeah, own yeah. hidden language so the humans aren't seeing this language or aren't hearing this language that's just smart it's smart really yeah and in Foville there's soldiers in my book that have brain implants mm-hmm. and there I described them as having a kind of Glimmer, glimmer, no, a glimmer oh, in their glimmer eyes, in their eye, yeah, yeah. and they've got the kel- keltoid scarring on their heads, and that's how so you can tell the difference. Yeah, yeah. There's a few, mostly it's all the Americans that have these implants, and that's how uh, Pee Wee. <coughs> that's how Pee Wee sometimes intervenes in certain situations where he goes into those implants and fucking. Fuck in, in chapter seven, yeah, and he goes into their brain implant. You know, read film. Yeah. Yeah, it's on Amazon. W. H. Smith Weymouth. It's also available on in Target, Barnes and Noble. Uh, it's available on World of Books. It's also available here. Ding, and do a, do a ding. Ding. So, there we go. I'll put some stuff in. 
so we can ding it up. <laughs> yeah. And uh, yeah. I'm, I'm just going to say it now, right? I don't want to be 100% on it, but I definitely want Tebow on next. All right. All right. All right, people. Peace out. That's right. Good to be back, in it? It's good to be back. Subscribe. Like, subscribe. Instagram. Peace. Thank you.